Novel Chronicles is a tabletop web series combining improvised storytelling and acting structured using the rules of a role-playing game. There are four players who each represent a character in a group of adventurers. And there is one game master who plays everyone else in the world the characters encounter. Because it's a game, there are a lot of dice rolls. Typically, lower numbers are bad, and higher numbers are good. We use our imaginations and props, miniature terrain, and vivid performances by our five actors. And our story is set in the alternative fantasy world of Bintir. This is Novel Chronicles. Hello and welcome to episode 8 of Novel Chronicles. I am your game master, Timothy Reese, and we are very happy to have you here. And by we, once again, I would like to introduce our cast of characters. Hello, I'm Bill. I play Hecate, a <laughs> nomad sword mage, and he's a whole lot of spooky and a whole lot of sad. Oh, I am Danielle Beckman, and I play Greta. She's a squick. She's a two-foot-tall ball of fun, and she does nothing <laughs> questionable, <laughs> ever. I'm Mark David Christensen. I play a fern that goes by the name of Ewan. And, you know, he's 5'2". He's old, sometimes wise, sometimes just runs in like a dummy. But he's pretty cool. Is he 5'2"? I believe so. 5'2 or 5'3". I thought he was 4'2". Oh, is he 4'2"? Uh-oh. I don't think he's 4'2". I think he's like 3'6". I mean, is he 3'6"? <laughs> Uh, I, I, I pretty much think I just calls. said my own real height. <laughs> <laughs> is what I did. That's oh <laughs> my god. Yeah, We're perfect. melding. We are melding. None of this is getting edited out. <laughs> no, no, no. None of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's an empty notebook. <laughs> Oh, wow. oh my god. Hello, I'm Victoria Ronnie. Uh, welcome. I play. <laughs> Ashvin, the barbarian. I'm a rolk, and um, she's furry. She's ferocious, and she's single. <laughs> cool. I'm expecting that. One. Also, also a skept Also accepts they. Anyway. Novel Chronicles just became a dating show. <laughs> yeah. It's a dating For fictional um, characters. Furry and ferocious. Yeah. Furry, ferocious, That's the tagline. And single. Yeah. yeah. That's the name of Ben Tears dating. This is the yeah. most unhinged connection. Intro so far. Furry and ferocious. I like the idea of having to toggle characteristics of yourself in Ben Tear, and it's like body type, and it's like skin. Nope. Fur. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Before we even begin, uh, I'd like to say a special thanks for all of our Patreon supporters who make this happen. Woo! If you're interested in helping us keep the story going, please go to patreon.com slash brooklynquarter. We have lots of fun perks that are out for those that are beginning their tabletop RPG life and also some really fun perks the higher up you go in the tiers. So take a look there. The Ben tiers. The Ben tiers. Oh. No. no. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh I kind of love it, though. I know. <laughs> yeah, you you got to lean into it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's great. <laughs> anyway, thanks for your coin. support. Okay. <laughs> uh, where last we left off, the Caveat Cooperative, our delightful and prodigious band of sellswords, are in the muck-filled coastal town of Restavarn. They are under the employ of the currently powerless mayor, Kubris Gelatarn, and under his employ, are investigating the holdings of the various alders of the city. Five years back, a huge sinkhole formed on the coast of Restavarn, bringing with it first an environmental catastrophe, and secondly, an influx of thousands of prospectors mining the depths for valuable resources. The mayor, believing he could wrest power from the now derelicting alders, has tasked the party with finding any bureaucratic lapses on their properties. While investigating Emer's Heap, north of town, the Caveat Cooperative discovered a mass grave, and on their return journey were ambushed by another group of mercenaries known as Stammoth's Crew. They are now recovering after a costly victory. And where we return to the party, we have Ashvin and Ewan, who have been reclining in Hecate's tent, 
a ways away from the now empty mass grave, which you discovered upon returning from the battle just an hour or so ago, as well as the returning site of Hecate and Greta having retrieved the strange chain mechanism that was used to attempt to pinion both Greta and unsuccessfully Hecate in the Don't battle. Remind me. In the catastrophic battle, uh, just really at this point, an hour and a half ago. And now, as you're returning to the tent, you can see the reclining Ashvin, who's laid out, I'm assuming you're asleep, as well as oh, Ewan, yeah. uh, who appears to be drinking out of a water vessel the same way one would drink out of a pint glass, but having just water. Looks a little bit perturbed by it. Just wishing this wasn't water, you know what I mean? Look what we got! Yeah. You set the whole thing in the middle of the oh, room. you brought a whole thing? Yeah, I'd love to oh. examine this thing. Make an investigation check. 21. Giving it a look over, it's very well engineered. In fact, it's a level of mechanical implementation that is possibly even beyond your skill as far as the manufacturing of it. Looks like it was done in a meticulous way. It has a number of interlocked motors that are all gear driven and spring driven. It's very heavy and looking at it, it appears quite rugged. So even after its usage, it, again, this, this device had two chain mechanisms that would spool up and could be thrown to adversaries that it would then retract back in. And even now, it looks like with just a little bit of um, TLC, you could probably reset it yourself. Oh, just resetting, like it doesn't need like lubricating or oil or anything? No, Okay. No. It uh, needs cleaning. One of, one of the pinion ends that was never used is still poison. I want to get to work on cleaning it up okay. and stuff because would it fit in my fathom satchel? Just barely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's much larger on the inside, but it just barely passes through yeah, the diameter we, of the opening. We got to hold on to this. I'm going to shine this up real nice and um, maybe we can give it our own name well, if we, we need to use it. Weren't we going to show this as proof of something strange oh. going on here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we're going to do. We're gonna show it as proof. So maybe I shouldn't clean it then because we want to show how it is in its normal state, right? You want to keep it, don't you? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Right. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. All right. Oh. Well, maybe after showing it, you can right. keep it after that. Okay. We're keeping it as evidence. Yeah. Yes. Evidence goes right inside the bag. Yes. Um, I'm gonna. Can someone help me? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. small. <laughs> <laughs> Hecate will help out on uh, Greta putting it in the bag. Okay. The two of you are, are, are struggling to maneuver it into the small opening Greta, of the satchel. I think she surprised herself with how high her voice even went there. It's also quite a, oh. a it's quite a strange yeah, maneuver for you having to bend over that far. Yeah. Because if it's on Greta's shoulder, that means it's only a foot off the ground of the fathom satchel as you're attempting to maneuver it. <laughs> But as it, finally, to push it yeah, as it finally passes through the opening okay. and disappears, leaving the bag weightless. Okay. Um, also, as part of the use of it, it has to be fixed to the ground. Mm. So it'll have to be spiked into whatever surface. Otherwise, it would just bang okay. around when it goes off. But um, currently, as the group of you are recovering, you can take a short rest, recover the hit dice that you'd like mm -hmm. from the battle you just had. Looking over now in just the pale firelight of the tent, which, correct me if I'm wrong, adjust its temperature according to your needs. It's always comfortable, right? It is always comfortable. It's always comfortable. So considering considering that it's not that cold outside, the, the light of the fire is mainly just to give you a sense of home. But you can see even now the pale glittery reflection on Ashvin's fur as they're laying on the floor of the tent and have managed to pick up quite a bit of the Poshalite dust uh, as they've rolled around in place, taking this nap in the spot they are. It's currently right around 9.30, 10 o'clock in the morning. It's still so early. We did so much. Yeah, we had a, we've had a day. <sighs> sure Do have. we want to just go to bed now? I am go to not bed. even remotely <laughs> tired. <laughs> yeah, I'm not Better you for sleep? I mean, I'm worn out, but... I guess so. I'm I'd like a, good, a drink still. You want a drink? Yeah. I'm hungry. Gonna see if I got anything. And I pull out an 
old carrot. <laughs> this looks... Ah, it's okay. It's a small mouse-like creature eats a carrot. Can we close the tent up with our sleep in here? Yeah. I think we should let her sleep. We will. And maybe wait, head wait, back wait. to town with that thing. If you close Leaving the tent, whatever's in it, stay, but she could suffocate. Can't we? Can we close it? Magically down, and she's still in the tent. Or do you have to take it out? No, you have to leave. What are you I just asking? Leave. I just want to let her sleep, is all I'm See saying. See this? And I put the fathom satchel on the table. This is a fathom satchel, kind of works similar. Where you go, you reach in, and you say, you say, ah, this is the thing. And you go in, and it's space. Lots of space inside. Are you suggesting you we, we put her in sleeping? And no, 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 she make wouldn't a constitution survive. Check, <laughs> make a constitution Yeah, just to see if you stay aw- stay asleep during this. <laughs> she wouldn't survive uh, in here. All right, I was just asking. Or we could just wake Seven. her up. Yeah, we it's could Im- just... It I'm is just... impossible to stay awake at this conversation yeah. happening all around you. Just trying to let Where you keep sleep. hearing your name over and over again. I don't know if this carrot's good. <laughs> now, are you wake her up? Are you doing that to spite <laughs> me? Why? I d- Come on, let's get him, get him up. I get Ashley sits up. Oh, oh. oh. Ah, there she is. Well, good. We don't have to worry about that anymore. Hmm. We For gotta kind go. Kind of different directions. You feeling better? Mm. Okay. A bit. Greta pulls out a second carrot. You want? Mmm. Mmm. Yum, 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 mm. yum, yum. You, you, I'll take it. You. Okay. There you go. <laughs> it's very dry. This is okay. really dry. Yeah, I could use some uh, water to wash down. All right, so what's the plan? <laughs> Look at this stuff all over the tent. Oh, I've had worse. He <laughs> keeps eating the carrot. <laughs> Remember this stuff? Is there any sort of markings or anything that could maybe on this machinery that we can look at and maybe give us a clue of what kind of information we're taking back? You want me to take it out now? No, I didn't get a good look at this. Okay, come on, Henry. <laughs> Let's go. As the two of you struggle once more. All right, I'll to, help you. As the three of you now reaching in. Oh, no, no, too many cooks in the kitchen. It's, it's, it's all right, we got this. It's hard not to get your fingernails beat up as you're attempting to get it out of the bag. As it's, <sighs> There's no real place to grab hold of it comfortably. But as it boom, sets on the table, a quick once over as the group of you are turning it over and shifting it in place is trying to get any kind of indication of a maker's mark or any imprint that would give any kind of style to it. There's nothing on there that would indicate make or model, whoever had made it, wherever it had been made, whether the construction is necessarily magical or mechanical. It appears to be mechanical, whatever's driving it, just by the weight of it. And there doesn't appear to be any kind of arcane sigilry that's on it that would indicate that there's a magical effect occurring with it. Mm. Uh, but strikingly, it is exceptionally well made. Should we take the, the poison tip off this? Yes. There's another one just sitting on it. Yes. Well, why would we why would we have to show that there's poison on it? Just I'm saying, should we remove it? I don't want accidentally going it. off. Um, Greta pulls out this, <laughs> this bulbous bottle and with her work gloves proceeds to remove the poisonous tip. It unscrews. Okay, hmm. and put it in. So here, it's in the separate bottle, away from that, so it won't brush up on anyone. If I could have Ashvin make a history check. Ten. Looking at the device, you've seen complicated mechanical works before, specifically in Beerus. Mm-hmm. Typically with several of the gates in Beerus, specifically the one for the Iron Palisades. It's quite exceptionally built and um, has a a few mechanical elements that would lend themselves to springs, counterweights, that sort of thing. The engineering here is on a par with that. Whatever you're looking at, this is not something that would be done in a shed. This is not something that would be done in an amateur fashion. This is uh, exceptionally well made uh, beyond your average artisan craftsperson. I don't know, I've never seen anything like it, really. Oh, we could bring you to the Ariad and Sconsery to look at it and tell me what they think of it. Someone really had to want to hurt someone else to be able to put the time it takes into making that. So do you think they're mass produced, like there's multiples? There might be more, but this doesn't look to be mass produced. So um, he goes up and he starts like just sort of like following the gear, like rolling his hands on the gear. He's like, 
Actually, I've seen something like this. Really? Not as deadly. Up in Charl. Up in Charl? Right. I spent quite a lot of time out there. Yeah, that far north, this? Exactly, but they use it not for this sort of deadly reasons. They use a mechanism like this so they could get ships up against them ice cliffs up there. Stabilize them during the big waves. Wait, so this thing that, that went into my body is supposed to go into icebergs? That's the capability of it. Not to poison them, of course. That's real messed up that they're using it for this now instead of ships. Well, anything you make can be good for good or for bad. Yeah, I know. I know that all too well. Mm. <sighs> well, I say we take this back to uh, Kubris. Yeah. Mr. Galaton. Seems like a good place to start. That's strange. It is strange. Did you see him all, only in Charo or other places too? Mainly Charo. I guess the question is who's Stameth, right? Was he. Is he. Was he a. Well, pff, we know where he is now. He was just the leader of this mercenary group, right? Was, was he a, a pirate? You know, was he on. What, is he from oh, Charo? In the past. Good is this is this their signature thing? You know, mm-hmm. maybe some of the people around here would know. Yeah, I'd love to speak with him, but unfortunately, uh, he's not exactly in one piece, and I can't speak with something that doesn't have a mouth anymore. Oh, I'm still angry. We let that one get away. I know. But the fact that everyone was in pieces is none of our fault. So okay. Ashvin is visibly looking away and not speaking. All right, let's let's get this let's thing get... back in the satchel, everyone. <laughs> let's get moving. Let's get moving. <laughs> All right, let's get it back in there. Okay. As your fingers are pinched in the exact same place once more as you're no maneuvering into in the time. sack. Hecate's left hand is absolutely mangled <laughs> <Yeah>. now. <laughs> oh, sorry. Is it? Passes once more into the Fathom Satchel, packing up the tent and gathering your possessions. At this point, it's closer to 11 o'clock now, as you're now in the the bleary sun that is beginning to start to bake Emer's Heap, this large, muck-filled, wide expanse that formerly was the wheat fields that fed the city of Restavarn, now the dumping grounds under the alder Emer. And as you begin to make your way back towards the hill that's the barrier between the road leading to Restavarn and the heap, you can see that the larger multitude of people that you had previously seen when waking up that were digging out that area directly in front of the hill have mostly dispersed. At this point, it appears that the wagon trains that are left are wagons bringing more muck as they begin to form another tip with another landing place that's already had gravel strewn about. They've already reset in order to bring in more trash coming out of the pits Mm. as they continue to dig out. And a look of uh, bemusement and the shouts and jostles of people as they begin their day, as you begin to pass the baggage train of individuals bringing uh, muck out of the pits, you rejoin the road that leads further back into Restavarn. We want to talk to people, right? Do we want to do that? No. I was just Did about. We? Yeah. I was just about to say. Uh, I don't. I don't think we should talk to anyone about uh, this. I think we should uh, just uh, bring Leave. it back. Yeah, but uh, but I do uh, want to look. Is there any of that partial light around anywhere? Because where our tent was, there was a lot more, like sparkling in the dust. Do I see any? It's impossible to see in daylight. Yeah, mm. oh. it's too far too. It's far too bright in order to actually see. Okay. Didn't and you take some at some point? I don't. Did I make that up? In my no, head? she. You did. Yeah, I did. You took a sample. You took a sample. Yeah. I forgot. That might have been like a couple of sessions ago. It was. Yeah. yeah that oh was, yeah, I am. And Ashwin is it. still covered in it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, Ashwin is explosive, right? In fresh water. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking about how it, but it's valuable as gold, and mm-hmm. we talked about an ampoule, a sealed glass container. Yeah, that it's was typically, our and I, I should say, I should not say specifically explosive. It's very volatile, so it's like you're not <laughs> gonna spontaneously combust, <laughs> but it doesn't survive. T- it won't survive a rainstorm for sure. 
And that's one of the reasons why it's very hard to find, is that if it gets wet, but it just- But salt it, stabilizes salt it. Salt stabilizes it, yeah. Okay. So salt water is kind of a perfect medium for it, hmm. um, which is why it's also often sealed in an actual ampoule. And it's phosphorescent, okay. Mm -hmm. Who, who, do, who do we see around the, around the train? As you're passing people, there's no one you recognize. It's mainly just seems to be muck haulers, those who work mm. in the city. Nobody Everyone's looks like they're in charge. Dirty. No, it doesn't seem to be. What order there was the day before with the overseers, there are a couple individuals that by the red color of their tabbers are probably Song Dino, the mercenary company. Mm. They look to be currently running the shift of people dumping muck. But there's no one there that stands out in particular. It's not that organized of an operation. So it's another mercenary company. It's that's... not Grin and Barrett. By the way, as this conversation is happening, I'm assuming you're still walking. So. Yeah. 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 All right. And I'm talking up to my friends. So, uh, Kubris, are we going to see Kubris Gelatin? Yeah. Or are we going to look up the Elta Gemery first, you know, to see, do a little more... Uh, detective work before going back, or what do you, what do we think? It doesn't feel like we have much to bring back yet. I mean, except I we killed the people. I think I we should try to check out that Gemini. You have an appointment with Kubris in at, in the evening, so we got the night time. So I wonder. The, the, usually, you know, when I've worked other places in the past that are based in a city. There's a place that you have to go back to. Yeah. Do you think that there was a place for Stamets crew to go back to? Right. Definitely. Would that guy have gone back there? Yeah, he might just be in the big city. Once we get back to Restavan, mm. ask around, say we're looking for the crew. Yeah, okay. Maybe the, what's, the, 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 the pub, the bar that we were that we met Cod at. Cobboilers? Oh, 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 no, ask the one where Husky works? Yes. I forgot what that's We can go back, called. ask Husky. The Bitter Wisp. Yes, maybe Oh, he came to me, the Bitter Wisp. And then we're not asking someone random. That makes sense, though, eh? Okay, so, yeah, we go to the Bitter Wisp first? Yeah. Yeah? Sounds good. Sure. Okay, uh, but but if we happen to see Elta's Gemery, should we go in there? I'd like to stop by there. Let's go! As Greta begins to jog ahead of the group, <laughs> a direction. Race. I mean, right. it's not a race with Greta. It, at least the point she's, she's jogging. That's as Greta's jogging <laughs> and everyone else is just keeping pace. <laughs> just Greta's. As you begin to uh, make your way to There's the road, no as you be. are now passing through the various shanties that are on the perimeter of Restavarn. As a r reminder of background, Restavarn, whenever it was, you were there seventy years ago was a fishing village of no more than 200, and now it's swelled up to 20,000. And the majority of these people not being able to fit within the scaffold-like buildings that have formed up that are all leaning on top of one another in the, in the village's core is it's one of the few places of bedrock ground where you can actually build a larger structure, are on the outskirts in various shanties, lean-tos, and pop-ups that have formed as prospectors and other services have flooded into the city in an attempt to make their wealth and way in the world. And as you're passing now through, you see people in the various states of lives. There are those who are finishing up breakfast or lunches, those who are carrying groceries to or from the small, strange markets that have formed up with something that's a combination of a money economy mixed with a barter economy as people are trading raw ore in various stalls for vegetables. Over the better part of the next couple of hours as you navigate the winding, very confusing streets that all run together that even though you haven't encountered rain so far, just from the look of the furrowed sort of gullies that are in various places, when it rains here, it must be a mess as you are stepping thankfully over dry ditches and furrows you find yourself once more regaining entry into the even more confusing assemblage of streets of the proper city of Restivarn. you immediately pass under a few signs that at some point likely held descriptions of what they sold leaning over the streets and as you pass under one in particular a large pigeon lands on it just sort of as 
as it moves on the sign and a fresh falling sludge of silt and pollution that had gathered from the day before just cakes all of you on your head. Looking up, you can see the pigeon just flapping on the sign as you continue <laughs> marching through the streets. Just take a glob of it and throw it at the pigeon. Is it, is it <laughs> once more regains the sky? Purpose. Isn't it, isn't it uh, good luck when the pigeon um, shakes dirt at you? I heard it once. I don't think so. It's going to be a good day. And I clean out my ear. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> will kind of duck behind an alleyway, press digitation, clean himself is off a little bit. As it shakes off of you, walk back, stepping around, fingers still strangely dirty. <laughs> as it, <laughs> how does this always happen? <laughs> as you rejoin the rest of the group and begin to uh, make your way with your now more dirty companions than they were, stepping into the main throng of people, this is clearly must be for some sort of lunchtime activity. You didn't hear any bells this morning, as far as you were in the heap. But as you're now looking out, there is a, it's just a morass of people who have come from various places to eat directly in the streets. People have laid out blankets, napkins, they've brought out barrels and wagon wheels, anything they can to have as a surface. As workers, not having a place to really make it back to the shanties, but wanting to eat, are now just eating literally in the street. And as you're stepping over people who have brought up small fires, that they're roasting things that remarkably look like pigeons. You find yourself trying to step around without disturbing anyone as it's just a cacophony of people talking around you. All of them looking absolutely filthy, but a general air of happiness. I would like to be very keenly aware as I'm walking through if people are on the ground or like kneeling or whatever, especially right at my ear height, of any conversations of different mercenary groups and whereabouts and things. Uh, make a as, perception check. As we walk through. With disadvantage. Uh-oh. Squick overload. There's so much <laughs> conversation. I'm trying to listen, but I don't know if I can. Ah, my ear's 14. You catch a few. That was disadvantage. Yeah. You catch a few. Oh, that's remarkable. <laughs> uh, you catch a few conversations related to what you can best assume is fighting but you can't make out whether or not it's some sort of paid combat sport or if it's in reference to the activities of the morning. I'm going to tap yesterday. on Ewen's uh, armor. Hey, hey. Boom, boom. People talking about us, I think. They're talking about People them. saying there's a fight. They knew that there was a fight. What are the fights are there? What are they? Right, but what are they saying about us? I don't know. What are they I, saying about the fight? I just heard the word fight. And you assumed it was about us? Yeah. I mean, this is, it seems like a place where there's a lot of fights. Yeah. I guess, I guess you No, you're <laughs> right, actually. But maybe it wasn't about us. Uh, my my grandparents are about... off right now. We got to go somewhere more quiet. Mm -hmm. My nose is going a little crazy. <laughs> right, let's get through, out of this then. You all right? Ah! Um, I'm going to go to the outskirts. <laughs> Um, around. I'm gonna go by the buildings because it's a little too much. A lot of people. As Greta begins to tweak out against the buildings. I'll go with the, the tweaker. <laughs> from the sensory overload. Ashvin was about to pick Greta up before she walked away and she's just like... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. <laughs> As the two of you begin to stomp through together while Greta and Ewan are darting uh, from some of the higher places on thresholds of doors making your way through. As you're all on the lookout for Elta Gemery, you don't see any indications of a sign. In fact, it's unlikely you would just stumble upon anything in this city. Yeah. You begin to wonder, actually, after a few moments, if you've seen the same couple of fern eating pigeons on wagon wheels more than once, now twice, now three times. Make a perception check, everyone. Nine. 27. Nine. 12 and 20. Looking it over now, you realize that you're having a conversation whether you're lost. No, you. it just seems that a lot of the fern here have been eating pigeons. And it actually is oh. different sets of fern all eating roasted pigeons now. Oh. As you begin to <laughs> navigate around a couple of the bends, you finally looking up, catch sight of Middle Hall. The oh. familiar sight of the monstrously tall lean-to structure which had been a site of a previous battle uh, just the day before. 
Osman, remember when you went down that slope? Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Yeah, you did good. Now Lefty's dead. Wow. Yeah. Anyway. Where's uh, that pub? As you step into the main square now, <laughs> you can see the three-corner signboard, which is in the middle. At this point, you can see that there's several mercenary companies that have gathered around it, uh, specifically Grin and Barrett, who are now standing in full yellow tabards, leaning against the sign, who take notice of the four of you as you step into the square. Okay, yeah. Uh, and right across the, the gap, you can see the bitter wisp. I think we've got eyes on us. I know, we got to be strategic. Are they friends with the Stamath crew? I don't know who's friends around here and who's not. I don't know these groups well mm. enough. Mm. We need an inside ear, somebody who knows the gossip. Or we could just ask them why they're looking at us. No, I don't think we want to do that. Fine. What it's, do a, you? it's a larger crowd. I guess you're right. At this, from this distance, it looks to be about 15 to 20 individuals. Oh. And they're quite a ways from you but it's unmistakable that their eyes are following you as you step through the square. Mm -hmm. Let's go talk to Husky, yeah? Mm -hmm. But none of them move as you step through and make your way into the front door. Are you into the front door or the back door? Last time you walked through, you had entered in the back door? I just want to make sure. I feel like we would do that again, yeah. right? We're trying to... Yeah, yeah, yeah to, to that back came. booth. So as you yeah. make your way back around the backside of the Bitter Wisp, apart from the place where you had set up the tent the day before. Yes. Uh, <laughs> as you... Uh, make your way around the back and into the back door, which leads into the larders and kitchen. Um, stepping inside now, it's quite full of individuals who appear to be in the middle of some kind of lunch. Some of the wealthier patrons who are able to afford a, a, a drink and a meal inside of a pub during the week. But as you step in, you can see a very busy husky carrying a plate of sausages and pickles and who makes eye contact with you if you step in and then makes his way back around the bar out of sight. Currently, you're standing in the back larder, mm. most of you filthy, for a few moments before Husky makes his way back over. You uh, need a table? Yep. That would be nice. That back one? Yeah. As he looks over, you can see that there's a group of three or four individuals in sort of heavy cloaks. They just got off the road. As they're sitting around the table, some of them are playing a light game of cards. As Husky goes over, you all need to move now. Get up and go. And they, there's quite a bit of a scramble and scuffle as they're trying to grab their things and make their way over to the bar where they sit sulkily now, down looking back at the group of you who, Husky, please make yourselves at home as you find yourself sitting around the, the table. Uh, okay. I kind of feel bad Sorry, thank you. Ergeron Ale? Ergeron Ale? Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes, please. Uh, please. Excellent. And Husky disappears back around the bar. I guess you will back. look uh, at the people at the bar and just... None of them wave. <laughs> I tried. Mm. Maybe you could go prestidigitate them. As yeah. a favor. Good idea. I, don't I know. have an idea. Why? And I wait for him to come back. Yes, Husky makes his way over with, looks to be a plate of uh, sausages and pickles, as well as four pint glasses. Oh, fresh sets them down. Boom, 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 boom. Could we give them a round, too? <laughs> Absolutely! And making the way back over, you see uh, Husky whisper something to them, and they all recoil slightly at Husky's sudden presence before they look back at you, and there's a slight wave back from the one you had previously waved at, who's yeah, continuing to deal cards now again to, the, yeah, to their companions. These are good pickles. I hand. They're very spicy. Oh, that's a spicy pickle. You told me that last time. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever Husky comes back around, Ashvin hands them a gold. As Husky comes back around, oh no, 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 no. For them. For no, them. no, no, no. This is all on Kubris. <laughs> lest, I... lest we forget, there's an open tab here. And walks away. A few moments later, Husky <laughs> returns with a, a bowl of water. It's a large white porcelain bowl. Setting it on the table, you can see there's little bits of steam rising off of it and a few hand towels. Why don't you all clean yourselves up? And you can ask me whenever you need to know. All right, I'll be back in a few minutes. Thank you. As you begin to, like, genuinely try to wash yourselves at this table, at least cleaning your hands and your faces. And I clean the top of my head. After a few minutes as you're so diving into the head. sausages and pickles, a Husky makes his way back and leaning against one of the side walls, looks over, okay, make it quick. 
What do you need to know? Ashvin has not cleaned themselves because they felt very forced into it. So <laughs> just to make a point, they're just still drinking. <laughs> I, I will take Ashvin's towel then. <laughs> And keep cleaning myself. Okay, what second can, round. What can you tell us about Alton Jimmery? The Elta. Elta Jimmery. Thank yeah. you. Elta Jimmery? Right? Uh, I mean, sounds like a. There's a couple of Jimmeries in town I'm aware of, but. What do you know about this particular one? I don't believe so, no. Okay. Uh, what do you know about Stamus Crew? And do they have alliances with any of the other mercenaries in well, Stam is pretty nasty. He's drinking here a few times. Oh, yeah, no, we know. I haven't seen him in probably a week. But yeah. no. Well, no Stamith usually just him. drinks with his cronies and not much else. So he doesn't have like a Bad real. Tipper. Okay, he just got cronies. He don't got like, you know, uh, friends. Uh, no, like an organized group. Well, things are complicated in Restavon, right? Like, yeah, I don't know, things move around a lot. Yeah. If someone was looking for him, who would, where would they go? <sighs> well, I figured, I mean, the easiest way to find anybody is a job posting board, but otherwise, I think I usually saw Stamath over on the western side of town whenever I'd go pick up the pickles, but I Wait, can't point to any residents. Is there anybody that we could talk to, if not yourself, that could tell us where all the geometry, geometries are located? So we can maybe find this one. Well, I can ask around. I'll see if anyone here's ever heard of Elta Gemery. Okay. Can maybe point you in the right direction. Is it a pleasant surplies? I, I don't know where Elta Gemery is. No, but have you known where pleasant supplies is? Pleasant supplies, I'm aware, yeah. Yeah, do you know Akna? No. Akna is. My friend who worked there. How long you known her? That's so sweet. <laughs> Look at you coming into town and. Twenty-four hours. That, I know her. That's not a friend. Fast friends. Acquaintance. Passerby. Sounds like you bought things there and then. Okay. Oh no, I met her in the bed. I feel like I'm learning more about you than you're learning about. Go ahead. What do you need to know? No, no, no. I was just wondering maybe if the Jemmerys was around the Pleasant Supplies so I could. Stop by, say hi to my oh, friend. There's no organization to this town. Oh, all right. Well, that's just good to know. The latrines are right next to where I pick up the pickles. <laughs> that's nice. Oh, that's why. So it's anyway, spicy. do you, uh, another round? <laughs> not. I usually well, don't I wouldn't drink. Well, one until you get back with that information. Mm. All right. I'll see if anybody here knows about it. Where Elta, Elta Jimmery, if I can drag that in. All right. I'll be back. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Husky. Is that why the pickle's so spicy? I, don't, I wouldn't think about it. I don't I'm know kidding. why that would make it spicy. I, uh, that would mean that everybody goes that with a train and to eat something spicy, possibly. Oh, let's so, let's see, you just don't understand. This is something, something I don't exactly want to think about. You've put an image in my mind that I would rather not be there. I'm yeah. just going to enjoy the pickles and not think about where they're coming from. Hecate, did you try a pickle? Yeah, I liked them. I don't want to not like them. I get it. The bar begins to clear out as the only individuals left in the bar appear to be the four of you at the table and a now completely indisposed husky. He makes his way back over with four more pints sitting on the table. We are in luck! Wouldn't you know it? I managed to track down this uh, Elta Jimmery for you. Ooh. Oh. It's about four blocks from here to the east. It's a little bit complicated to get there because you got to go on the circular paths that are kind of winding from whenever they were, they were put up during the, the first expansion we had after the prospectus came in. But anyway, it's a small shop. Uh, it's on the northern side of an eastern street that looks like it's heading west. And as you walk up, it's the one with the uh, white panes of glass. You can't see through it. It's just got a simple door and... The, it's been painted over, but that's pretty normal in places to store things that are kind of a value around here, you know? They don't want anybody to know what's inside, so they paint the glass. Oh, anyway. is it still white glass or dirty? Oh, well, everything's dirty here, but I specifically know. the glass has been painted white. So four blocks of town, north side to the west east corner something? No, no, no. It's on the east. Oh. It's four blocks to the east. east. On the northern side of one of the western facing streets. Do we got a compass? Holy oh, shit, my stuff. <laughs> I mean, I can. The one that we found in the secret hideout. The one you find in the what? The north is. 
the one um, that we bought mm. ah, finishes Directions. that ale. May I have a tea? Sure. And one more? Mm, yes. Okay. It makes his face wait. I'll do it, her. Are you sure about that? That's a lot you, of fluid. You know this little guy will be all right. Oh, that's a lot of fluid. <laughs> stop. <laughs> stop asking or talking about my fluids. All right. Making his way back over to Do the bar. Do you want the rest of my ale? I'll be okay, thanks. I'm only drinking tea now. A few minutes later, Cooper's returns with two more ales and a tea, setting it down on the table in front of you. All right, if you need anything else, let me know. So I don't know what we're going to find at the gemery, but he said that usually the western part of town is where... Sam it hangs out. I think we should definitely go to that board. We need to find them. We should go to that board. Isn't that right outside? Yes, but we just gotta go look at it. It was being covered by all those scary. Wait, why do we need to go to the board? I don't know. It might have information like, hey, Sam's crew looking for someone. Meet here to find something, and then we it would lead us to a spot. Well, uh, I, 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 I'm hearing you out, but. And this might be my boy, my boys talking now, but I Probably. think that we should go to the just go straight to that Gemini. Yeah. yeah, go kicking the doors there, you know. No, Trying to have all the information we can. <laughs> We're not right. kicking doors. Why not? I give up. <laughs> no, no, no. We're to kicking say kicking the doors. Why not? You know, they clearly they're messing around. Or something. It might be a very good just Gemini store. Is that this person uh, left he sold something to? They might not be a part of the problem. We've got to be inconspicuous. Let's just go to the gemery. Yeah, let's go. I'm done. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, let's go. Okay, we don't got to pay because Cooper's pays. Yep, it's on a tab. I'm Grab ready. like two pickles on the way. <laughs> Are you exiting out the front <laughs> or out the back? Uh, we always exit out the front. Should we do the back? <laughs> let's exit out the back, actually. Yeah, let's idea. exit out the back. So as you swipe them off the rest of the table, and as Husky gives you a little wave as you make your way out the back, as you step out the door, the four of you, in a bit of conversation as you're plotting your direction, stepping out, you immediately come face-to-face -face with the yellow tabards of 20 Grin and Barrett mercenaries standing in, directly in front of you. Oh, you go as well. And as the door is... Shutting behind you, you find yourselves in the back alley mm -hmm. with 20 individuals you do not recognize all staring at you. Hey there. Hi! Hi. You want a pickle? There's no real reaction. They're just staring for a moment. You guys need to go in and get good meal. I open the door. Come on in! You, you see one individual step forward. It appears to be a very battle-scarred, very fearsome looking Virm, who stepping forward with very lithe steps across the ground and almost gracefulness, she appears to be at, at her waist what would appear to be two large sickles that have a chain strapped between them as if they can be used in tandem, as well as what appear to be actual embedded adornments in her Ooh. plates that are visible as well as a thick coat of ring mail and the grin and bear at grinning skull symbol, who steps forward from the rest of the group and turns directly to you, Hecate. What? Excuse me. Were you in Ema's heap yesterday? Yesterday? Yesterday. Were you in Ema's heap? Yes. And it's just stepping forward. Were you there for the incident? Maybe. Continuing to step forward. I should have had that third L. <laughs> we have been looking for you in particular. Why? And then turning, as well as you. What, the big landslide? Yeah, we was caught up in a landslide. And as this Virm steps forward, now just feet from you. Uh, extends a hand. Hecate will grab it. And it's a very, very... Yeah. You can feel the talons on the other side as the Virum is looking at you. My name is Group Captain Saria, and you saved my mate yesterday. Because of you, Gazi made it out of the heap 
and the landslide collapse and then turns and bends down very close to you and because of you can walk. So I wish to thank you all for your efforts and we wish to thank you as well. At this you can see a general reaction of the individuals in Grin and Barrett. It's a full representation of species across Bentir. You see in the very back poking up from between set of two rolk legs appears to be the snout and eyes of a, the first squick you've seen. I smelled him. All the way in the I back knew looking, it. but otherwise. I knew that squick was there. I so thank it. you from the bottom of my heart. No worries. How do you identify yourselves? The caveat cooperative. And sticking out the very large hand compared to yours shakes it gently. Ooh. Well, you can consider that Grinnan Barrett stands with you should you need help. I thought you were going to be talking about something completely different. Wonderful. Thank you. What did you think I was going to be talking about? Nothing! Nothing, nothing is a joke! Ha ha! There's no laughter. So what are you all up, up to? Well, we're just on duty. And oh, are you, uh, like, uh, town security? Well, right now we're just holding protection over the main town square. Several of the businesses in this area employ us to provide security. Oh, does uh, Elta Gemery employ you? Uh, Elta Gemery, no, um, no, they don't. But they're just a few blocks from here. Do oh. you need directions? Yes. Oh, well, all right. I think we can spare a few to, to guide you there. She turns mm -hmm. around. The rest of you back to the square, and then and then turns back. I'll lead you there. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. Wonderful. What can you tell us about this Gemery? I don't know much about it, but I've I've passed by it before. Honestly. When we came out of that, I tell you, I thought... Are you, you drunk? You know it. I am. It's been a long it's morning. It's been a long morning. But you, it's just been hard. Are there any other groups that you Are want? you all right? Yes. You look like you fell in a fire. I uh, sort it's of did. Thing to say. Anyway, are there any other groups that you work with? Or is it just your group that was here? Gwen and Barry. That's what they're called, you <laughs> drunkies! I, 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 I know! Thank you, Greta. I'm not asking I'm about Green and Ben. She's asking her I'm questions. I'm asking sir. about other... I'm trying to thank her over here for not stopping me like I thought they all would. Oh? <laughs> well, we, right? we we occasionally work with Song Dinal. Okay. They generally consider them to be peers. Otherwise, we try to stay clear of Azure Company as oh. they go to their own agendas. Are there any others that you tend to stay clear of, just so we know? Oh yes, the Grim Nye. Ah. Just take it as a professional courtesy to steer clear of them entirely. As well as, I'm sure you've heard about the, the Silver Myriads in town. Where do you stand with Stemeth's crew? Oof. That pile of dung? Nothing. I don't even cross on the same side of the street as him. No oh, good. And if you were trying to avoid the side of the street that they were on, would, where would the street be? Well, usually I believe Stammoth operated in one of the... It's near the tannery. Mm. It's in, from here, it's to the west. Ah. It's about 20 blocks or so. It's where the squiggly streets turned into straight ones. Right there, there's an old brook, which now is really just a, a sort of a muck hole, which all the tanneries dump the chemicals into, mm. and then they mix that with everything that's flowing out of the latrines in order to tan the leather they sell. You can find it by smell. But oh. that's typically where I've seen Stammoth, oh. staying above one of the tanneries. Thank you. You're mm. quite welcome. But, and as this conversation has led you, Saria turns a corner, and there you can see as you've passed on the westward-facing northern side of the streets t four blocks east, as, this, as you realize that you've been crossing streets that were like stacked coins in the way that they were laid out, almost like crescent moons that were connected at, at odd angles, you find yourself now looking at a small, uh, reasonably well-kept business which looks to have actually swept the doorstep this morning. Mm. There's a small bell over a wooden door, painted black, as well as a pane of glass. Likely this was, by all estimate, it must have been a nicer home. Looking at it, you figure that it's 
likely predates the, the pits opening up just mm -hmm. by the style of construction. Mm -hmm. It's one of the, this ground floor is a little bit nicer than maybe the rest that you've seen that have been set up. Mm -hmm. And looking, you can see the panes of glass, which would have probably been where there would have been the, uh, most of the source of light on the inside has been painted white. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, above it, you can see in very small calligraphied writing to a almost perfect match to what you've seen on the note that you found in Lefty's journal, Elta Gibbery. Oh. And here you are, so I will leave you to it. If you need us, just come and seek us at the town square. We usually at least have a couple of representatives there. Oh, Wonderful. thank you so much, Captain. If we need to find you, how do we find you? Bitter Wisp. <laughs> the Bitter Wisp, okay. Bitter Wisp. I'll leave a note with Husky. Yes. Yeah. And I'll leave you to it. Again, thank you. Thank you. Of course. Yeah. Take care. And stepping back, quickly disappears off one of the side streets. Oh, that was nice. Oh, I totally thought we were screwed. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I was dead. I Honestly. was terrified. I mean, he's the most honest your one face. of all of us. I saw your face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you kept it cool. Yeah, yeah. Really, really, I, did. Really I don't cool. think I did. Cool I as did. an unpickled cucumber. I don't know if that exactly works, That's but I good. appreciate the intent. Yes. Good job, you two. Thanks. Thank you. Ewan makes his drunken little steps up towards the entrance of the Gemini and just, not rudely, but just drunkenly as you pushes the, tries to push the door. As you push the door and <laughs> lean on it, just, <laughs> you don't move anywhere. And you realize it's a pole. Uh, <laughs> it's Ewan kind of go shore up uh, Ewan and open the door. As you open the door and there's the distinct jingle of a bell, greeting the, uh, as you step into this small storefront that is very dark, save for a few lanterns that are glowing. You can see in the corner what appears to be a hooded figure. Uh, it is a elderly looking human female who's currently busily writing in a ledger and looks up. Uh, hello? Hi. Hello. And that's where we'll pick up after the intermission. As we return, the party caveat cooperative, just now having stepped into the interior of the Elta Gemery, you can see in the corner the cloaked individual, a human female, looks to be older, who is currently writing in a ledger of some sort. He looks up. Uh, so can I help you? Yes, actually. Hi. Stepping inside, it's very dark. There are just these few lamps that are burning. You can also see that the walls are lined with look to be drawers and cabinets, all kinds of very small, uh, all locked, almost like uh, security boxes mm -hmm. that appear to be where the goods are stored inside. But otherwise, it's very dark. Hi, uh, Hecate. Nice to meet you. Uh, we had a few questions about a recent deal that you may have done with a, uh, a lefty of Stamets' crew. Oh yeah, here you go. And I hand you the yeah. receipt. Hand it over. Looking over. Oh. This is, this is my handwriting, so. Uh, one second, let me look through. Uh, what was, uh, what are your questions? And looking back through the ledger now, you can see her flipping the pages a little bit slowly, looking over the various list of items that are on there. You can see that it's all done in a, uh, a script that looks to be, it's some sort of shorthand code that's used, but that's often used with those who are keeping ledgers, just for speed and secrecy. But as you're glancing over, there's nothing that's How well you know your customers? 
Well, I, I, I just trade the gyms when they come in. We so just want to see what's left is. Yeah, sure. yeah. So yeah that's over. All. Um, they passed that along yes, to I us. Yes, I see that I uh, had a transaction for a, uh, a lefty back six days ago. Mm-hmm. But it was just for a, an assortment of, of raw gold and some gems. Was it Pashalite? Uh, I, I don't believe so, no. Do you have Looking any Pashalite here? What? Uh, I, I do. Oh. What, uh, what kind of gems, if you don't mind us asking? Looking over. It looks to be uh, half a pound of sapphire and uh, one raw ruby. Hmm. Um, off the top of my head, what who, I know. Who are you? We're uh, caveat cooperative. Well, the friends are slowly. <laughs> we just, we just, we, we, so, we found uh, it. And <laughs> we're, you oh, know, you? we're just doing market research. Make a deception check. <laughs> I, I wanted to do a check to see what the ruby. You as well. The ruby and the granite. Would I, off the top of my head, know any spells that those things would be for? Ooh. I make an arcana check. Ooh. Okay. Could I, could I as well? Because I'm definitely trying to check to see if this. Yeah, make an arcana check. Oh, Seventeen. Seventeen. Deception. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Twelve. Twelve. Arcana. <laughs> as <laughs> looking, looking over at the two of you. So, you, you're doing market research. But you know Lefty, so... Well, so I, I'm, so I'm friends with Lefty. They needed to do the market research, but Lefty was busy, so... Lefty gave me that, said, you, you're you a my trusty friend, so you should go and help them, because I don't want to do that work. I've got other stuff to do. So we, are you in the caveat cooperative? I am, yes. Yes, we had to take on unfortunate people sometimes into our group, and we took this one in. So... Ah, that was mean. Yeah, I don't get away. I'm, I'm sorry. I just like to help friends. Oh, okay. The Arcana <laughs> check. That's a twenty-five. Twenty-five. Uh, minus a <laughs> minus a fourteen. As it scans across your head, you're aware of some evocation magic that uses it. Uh, you'd have to reference your spell book to actually pull the exact details, but you are aware of the region being used in evocation, specifically when it's ground. Mm. And I know that too. I rolled a 14, I did No, no. For you, will... for you, you're aware it can be used as magic regents, but he's got the oh, specificity. Okay. Hecate will kind of say under his breath, assuming that Greta can hear it. Oh yeah. Evocation. Make a sleight of hand check. Sleight of hand? Yeah. 16. Hmm. <laughs> you don't know. Right. Evocation. So, oh. uh, well if, I'm sure Lefty would be able to help you more. I just yeah. handled the transaction. Do you need it back? No. Because it's what? already been sold. Oh, so. no, I'm glad. Oh, good luck. Can you tell us here it was sold for three? Uh, absolutely not. Oh, right. I was just asking. I knew I was testing you, and you're mm-hmm. good at your job. That's what I was doing. I was all with you. Yeah, you are good. Lefty told me. You go in there and you ask them if they'll tell you what, how it was sold. And if they, tell you, if they don't say no, yeah, you tell me so I can take my jams out of there. That's all. And you passed. Make you. a deception check. <laughs> we have to take in some unsavory characters. We help the, un- the 18. needy. 18. She's being so rude. I don't know why you wait or you're coming at me. I'm trying to get through this. I'm trying to save I'm face. over here sweating. A bead of sweat. Like... <laughs> Rolls down Hecate's forehead as he glances at Ewan. You, you've been so helpful. That's all I have to want to say. Very helpful. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. So. Um, group huddle. <laughs> can I pull the group to the side of the? You can. <laughs> I think, I think Elta is just a, you know, run of the mill, Jimmy. <laughs> can I, can I make oh. a perception? Gem, Jemmery. Yes, Jem. Yes, it was, it was written me? down. You think it was Jim? Did you think it was someone named Jimmery? Yes. We no, it's a gem. Down. We literally, we talked about it. Like that, that is, is funny. Yeah, like the that sapphire. That is funny. I should tell them about this. <laughs> hey, this is, I, I want to say, again, thank you so much for helping us. And I just think you'd get a kick out of this. 
we came in here, all three of us thinking it was a gem early, and my friend here, <laughs> when I was helping out for my friend, if, right. Thought that we had, the it was a person's name. Uh, that was G Jimmery. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. That's good, right? Uh, 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 That's probably going to be the best party of day today, eh? It, 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 it has. She's going to make a deception check. <laughs> uh, you don't believe it. <laughs> what do we got to get out of here? Um, yeah, we do. Um, so in each of these, there's some sort of um, gems locked up, right? Yes. What would your price be for, say, um, like uh, an ounce of black sapphire? Well, uh, I would have to go with the current price. As she begins referencing through the book, she's flipping through it. Uh, I need everyone to make a perception check. 22. God, I'm <laughs> I rolled an 18 and I got worse than you. 20. Nine. Nine? I keep rolling sixes and nines. It's weird. 12. 12? Between... The two of you, as you're just glancing around while the individual um, is currently going through the ledger, two of you notice something, which is that as you walked in, as you step across the threshold, as you're stepping across the threshold, in the shop you can see that there is the, a row of cabinets, these little cubbies to your left, a row of little cubbies to your right, and against the back corner, opposite the door that you walked into, is the desk that the uh, elderly woman is sitting at with mm -hmm. the ledger. The wall that is directly opposite the door mm -hmm. is also covered in cubbies. However, as you're in the room looking at it, you get the distinct impression that the back wall that you're looking at is slightly askew from the rest. Mm -hmm such that it doesn't line up correctly. Do I feel a breeze? You don't feel a breeze, okay. but you, as you're looking at it, it, the back wall appears to be at an angle that's quite unnatural, such that you can see a gap in the corner directly above where the woman is sitting at the desk. It's very subtle, it's very slight, mm. but it, it's, uh, it stands out. As she's looking over the ledger, uh, so for a black sapphire? Yeah. Right now, uh, 700. Wow. Pleasant supplies is much cheaper than here. Goes back to the ledger. Is there anything else I can help you with? Oh, out of character. What does that usually mean, the wall being like askew? Does it, would it mean that there's a... Like, like, I feel like it's like an a false Drop wall it, or like something? That escape. gives you the impression. Okay, of a false yeah. wall. Like illusory? It would, or? Be, it would be pivoting in the middle, looking mm. at it. But you, you get the impression that the wall that she's sitting at is on some sort of pivot. It's not real. Do you have a facility here? Gotta use the facilities. No. Oh. So why do you use the facilities? I have to say, if you're done conducting business, it'd be nice of you to leave. Well, I... Um, Your presence makes me slightly uncomfortable. Why is that? Let's leave. You've come in with questions and have not actually bought or paid for anything. And also you claim to both know Lefty, but also be doing research. Your friend here is clearly drunk. I'm sorry about yeah. that. Yeah. Sorry about him. Yeah. Just had a look one too many. Before noon. Here we all been there. Can we? Do we get the <laughs> the, the 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 receipt back? Could we get that back? Oh, this. Yes. Uh, sure. Hands it back to you. Thank you. Let's leave. Right. Thank you. Remember to tell Lefty that I said hello. <laughs> I stumble back to the door. <laughs> as you just, as you I try to exit smoothly but drunkly back. Oh, <laughs> make, an, make an acrobatic check. <laughs> she doesn't even know your, your name. 14. 14, okay. You don't, you don't fall head of her heels as you back out of the what would now be a push door. Uh, but as you step over in the cling of you peering back in the street, nearly stumbling into someone else. <laughs> Wait a minute. Do you think that they could be refining Poshalite and selling it out of there? 
Are you still in the shop or did no, you leave? No, we've no, left. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I thought I only left. left. Very too. different conversation. I like, yeah. Dang, yes. Also, I would like to clear up that none of you asked her name. Well, we're rude. God. We didn't know why I was rude. I wanted to do. Oh, I thought her name was Alta. Something was off there. Something was off. I know, something was off. Greta, are you mad at us? Uh, you know, you I gotta really? say, when you're a little bit... I thought the two of you were talking, it would look like you were having some exchange. I thought I was trying to distract and well, I yes, just tried to help. Yes, but if this Give happens, there's a... Hey, if you were gonna lie, we gotta get our story straight. We can't be like, we're friends with her. Market <laughs> research. I'm a gemmery. I don't know why both things couldn't be true at the same time. Well, I'll tell you, you no, know, she was believing it. No, she wasn't. Not. No, she, she was very uncomfortable yeah. and asked us to leave. I would be uncomfortable too if I had a friend come and poke and I was someone I didn't know. But oh I believe it. Oh my heavens, Grace. So what are we going to do now? Next time, let us know what the plan is and yes, we'll Yes, we need a plan away. next maybe. time. The plan is called maybe stay sober. Right. Yeah, maybe don't, don't drink know. before we have to deal with shady things I drink like this. Shady. It's been a hard day. I, it has been a hard day. Yeah. And some of us deal it one way, and we saw that us deal it another way. We well, almost there's died this there's morning. There's a difference between drinking and drinking too much for the current situation. Well, I'm fully aware of that, and I drink too much. West <laughs> is that way, and Next Oshvin time. starts walking. North. As the streets curve, and as Oshvin begins walking, directly north. Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> that is correct. Yeah. Um, Oshvin, where are you going? West. Oh. <laughs> West, and then goes west. No, there's... What? Did you not see what was off in there? The back wall was on a pivot. Oh, is that... Ah, sure, you said... That um, back wall was a false wall. Why don't we try to go around the back? All right. Let's maybe go find the alleyway to see the back. Yeah. Okay, Uh, everyone, please be quiet. Or how about this? What? You, you two, stay here. Yeah. You keep an eye on them. Oh. I will go take a look. They're both bigger than me. Why do you think I'm in a cast? Who's trying to keep an eye on us? Yes. You're both drunk. Uh, so? That doesn't mean we don't know how to stay we still. We killed. All I have is stuff so to make We already it. were killed, almost killed this morning. And you were giving us a hard time because we wanted to drink and kind of forget okay. about the pain that okay. we experienced this morning. I stole a pickle here. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we'll stay here. Listen, Sorry, listen. Hey. Listen. Yeah. I also had a hard time. I know. Right. I was there too. All right. I apologize. Just because we almost got killed one time doesn't mean it can't happen again. So be careful. Go Please. It. And next time go we go to have negotiations anywhere, two things happen. One, we try to stay as sober as possible. Two, we get our story straight. Caveat Co. cannot be making mistakes. We want a good reputation around here. We're a cooperative. Yeah, we're supposed to cooperate. And as someone who has been sober for three months, four days, two hours, and 59 minutes, I'll say that it's okay to lay off. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. That's why I had the tea. All it's right, I'm not gonna go. easy. I'm going to go take a look. Hecate's going to duck off to the side. Cheers. Uh, <laughs> and use the Cheers. specter card. Mm -hmm. He's casting invisibility. Okay. And is going to go kind of take a look around the premises. Oh, as you that's so smart. And vanish from sight, making sure to move slowly so that your footfalls don't disturb the muck and the dust. Mm -hmm. As you are around some people, but there's not a large throng as you make your way around the back. Stepping around, you can see what looks to be a door that would be leading into the shop that you just left on the back side. Hmm. Whereas previously, you had only seen one entrance to the building. And you're not sure if it's possibly an adjoining shop in the back or if it's a, some extension of this first one, of the Elta Gemery. But there is a door that would be roughly geographic to it. It's unremarkable. Is, is there anybody watching it? Hmm? No. He'll go see if it's locked. 
as you jiggle the handle. Uh, Very carefully, not to, try not to make any sound. Yeah, as you jiggle the handle, it's locked. Sass. You know, he's got to help out there. <laughs> he's going to see if there's any other way in. The buildings all connect to one another. Uh -huh. It's possible that there's an adjoining wall, but again, mm -hmm. the room that you walked into on the other side of the, on the other block is one door in. There doesn't appear to be, it was, it, it's a multi-story building, mm -hmm. but it doesn't appear that there's any sort of ladder or window on this side. It's simply a door on the street. Mm -hmm. The building itself is not stone. It's, it's wooden and some plaster, yeah. but otherwise, no, there's no direct entrance. Mm -hmm. What are you two doing? I've fallen, I've just sat down in the muck. <laughs> Make a constitution <laughs> check for me. Oh. 18. Uh, you, you begin to sober up a bit. Great. Yeah. Ashvin is super frustrated, feels like they've been putting time out, and around this time is getting up and starting to wander in the direction <laughs> that Hecate went in. Okay. So as you begin to make your way now through the crowds and begin to step through. Hey, if you need anything, let me know. Uh, Got it. And then turning around one of the corners, make a perception check. Ten. Ten. Walking around, nothing really stands out as you're... Is you're stepping around people, you're making your way subtly. There's nothing, you're not mm. being necessarily hi hiding in a sense, but you're also not drawing attention to yourself, inconspicuously walking through. You notice immediately as Ashvin turns the corner, not quite whistling, but in a way, yeah. just glancing around, coming around now to the side. Do you want to walk right up to that building? You don't see Hecate. I don't see him, but I think I would at least follow the building. As you come around, making your way, you find the door that Hecate is actually standing right in front oh. of. Yeah. Hecate turns around. Ashvin? Hey. You just see space. <laughs> There's no one there. You feel a hand on your shoulder. Ah! I'm, I'm here. Oh. It's locked. Let's go back to Greta. Locked? Yeah. Okay. And they dig into one of their pouches mm -hmm. and take out a set of thieves' tools. Okay. And well. attempt to pick the lock. Cool. All right, make a dexterity Didn't check. Do that. Yeah, you are one. really. You're, you're, what are, are you? Why are you rolling like me? <laughs> Natural one. As you, <laughs> as you slide the lock pick out, just stick it into the lock. <laughs> it snaps directly in the lock. Oh. Is this the first time you've done this? No. Take it out, put it back, and I huff back to it's the just front. <laughs> Stepping around the corner. All right, I'm gonna go get Greta now. The pick is jammed in the lock. He'll try and pull it out. It's fruitless. Yeah. Not without specialized tools. Could thieves tool? Or I think I feel like Greta could probably get it out. Hecate will like will, will walk backwards towards Greta. Hey, Greta. <laughs> <laughs> as Ashwin, as Ashwin, are you standing apart from the group a little, or have you? Like a little, but I can yeah. still, yeah, I'm close enough. Okay. Yes? Uh, there's a door. It's oh, locked. it's Hecate. Yeah, yeah, it's me. It's not the scary voices. Okay, No, yeah? it's not the scary voices. Uh, could you help me with the door, the back door to it? Sure, let me around. see what I can do. We'll go back around. <laughs> As the two of you make your way back around to the back, um, looking at the lock itself, make a make an investigation check. Nineteen. Looking at it, there's no way you're getting that out without causing at least some damage to the lock. Are you sure this is a door? This is the door. I, I can assume. Hmm. Hmm. What are you two doing in the front? I'm. Uh, I pulled out my mace. And I'm just sort of like, <laughs> well, <it's> just <laughs> flicking it into the muck. muck. Just and, and I'm just. <laughs> um, this Ashman's thing warns me about danger. That's what this mace is for. It should have warned me about the lock on the door. I, I've done it. I've done it so many times. They taught me how to do it, and I put the, I put it in just as I was supposed to, and then it just broke. What happens? It's faulty. It's not your fault. It's, yeah, exactly. It's the door's fault. Or the 
the tools? Maybe this is go. just a bad day. You're right about that. I want to listen. I want to put my ear up against the door and listen. Can't hear anything. Woo! Wait! Um, I'm going to pull out uh, one of the magnets that I have in my bag. Okay. I want to see if the magnet in some way would be strong enough to pull the lockpick out. And especially with my very dexterous hands. All right, make <laughs> a dexterity. They're tiny. They are tiny. Make a dexterity <laughs> check as you're attempting to pull out the lockpick shard with a uh, with a magnet. 21. 21. As you're wiggling it back, back and forth with uh, as the as the shard of the lockpick begins to wiggle itself out of the lock, and you just using two fingers to gently pull it out, <laughs> you manage to dislodge it from the lock. Dang. Okay. Hey. Good stuff. Oh, you're over there now. Yeah, okay. I'm still here. <laughs> I know. I just didn't know where you were. And I cracked my knuckles again. I guess it's my shot to try to open this thing. Make a dexterity check. Nineteen. Nineteen. As you begin uh, picking at the lock in front of you, gently rotating the, the tumbler in your hand as you're getting leverage against it, you hear a sudden snick, and the door unlocks. Uh, as the door unlocks, um, I'm going to back up so you are, I am not seen. Mm -hmm. So you, you can see right in. Yeah. And I'm going to whisper, Thanks. And he will slowly open the door. I'm going to go back and join as the rest. As quietly as he can. As you step well, in. Well, oh, it's, it's an alleyway, right? It's an alleyway. Is there anywhere that I can crouch under to listen? Oh, there's plenty of places to hide. Yeah, yeah. I want to hide right outside the door. All right, so as you hear. slip into hiding, make a stealth check. And okay. as you are stepping into the, uh, as you're stepping into the space, uh, immediately you're assaulted with smoke an acrid smoke. It makes it difficult to even see. As the door opens, it just begins to pour out in a, uh, a white and black cloud from the door. It appears it was possibly sealed uh, at the bottom. And as, it's, as the smoke is sort of filling your vision, it's impossible to see inside, but it's something is definitively just finished burning inside of the room. And as and you're- I can smell it too? You can too. There's literally smoke pouring out of the doorway. You're on the other side. Can we see the smoke yet? And after maybe 10 seconds, you begin to see it drifting up on the backside. As you're just playing with the mace in the mud, looking up, you now see smoke rising from the back of the building. Let's we'll see what that's all about. Get up and I just drag my mace. <laughs> <laughs> As you just drag it through the mud, yeah. leaving a trail. I'm, I'm, I've sobered up a little more now. Yeah, I'm I sober, feel. I'm yeah. just... <laughs> I'm just Linus. <laughs> <laughs> As the two of you are making your way back to the uh, back of the building now, you can see smokes pouring out of the space. I see them. <laughs> as well as, uh, what was your stealth check? Seven. Seven. As well as Greta, who is attempting to hide behind some rubbish and is clearly visible to the two of you. As she's looking over at the smoke coming out. You can see the barest of outlines of a silhouette in the doorway as the smoke is moving around mm -hmm. Hecate. Uh, Hecate's still protected by invisibility. He'll step inside. Stepping into. inside, it's just, you can't see anything. It's smoky. As you are feeling in the space, there's nothing in there. No furniture, no rug, there's no adornments, there's no light sources on the inside. In fact, looking along the interior of the space, all you can find, finally, in the middle, is a single pot that has the smoking, ashy embers of this now burnt out fire. It's just gone out. Are there any windows? You're not in their space. The, uh, what are the three of you doing? I'm just trying to tell you to make co take cover somewhere near a Greta. Yeah, just trying to hide. Slowly and watch the door. All right, so as you step out of the building, um, the four of you are in the alleyway. There's a few people that seem to be looking at you and also looking at the doorway and then kind of moving back inside, not really joining whatever this is that's happening in the middle of the street. The barbecue couple of the locals just avoiding a, any scene altogether. Uh, you find yourself quite alone. Okay. Well, Good. Uh, are, are you shutting the door? No. We're going to let it air out. It's just flowing okay. out. Uh, let's walk away, shall we? 
What if someone's in there? What? There was nobody in there. What was in there? Nothing. Nothing except for a pot, embers of a fire. Something was burning in there, but I don't know what. That was all that was in that room. Could we pick up any scent of what was burning? It's a normal fire smell. Okay. It's whatever you would smell around a campfire. Okay. There's no distinguishing aroma. All right. So After... not like burnt flesh or anything. No. Okay, no. great. Not... Because I have smelled that in Ben Tier before. Uh, no. The... <laughs> Uh, uh, after 45 seconds or so, the smoke has cleared enough that the four of you curiously peering into the interior space can see that it's a room almost identical in size to the Elta Gemery that you had been inside. You can see that the only light is coming through the doorway. And in the middle of the room is a small iron pot with bits of smoke coming out of it. But otherwise, there's nothing in the room. What about the back wall? Oh, you'd have to move in, take a look. Uh, I'm gonna just cast light on my notebook. All right, so as your notebook boom, glows with light and you step into the space, uh, you can see the back wall itself. There is quite a bit of worn movement along the floor in the wood, mm. where it appears this is the opposite side of the shop you were just in. So if I push on the wall, does anything happen? You want to push on the wall? As you push on the Just wall, slightly. <laughs> there's the slightest movement to it. Hecate will go inside and kind of take a look around, see if there's anything else. There's from nothing else in there. So strange. Could Hecate take a look inside the iron pot and see what was burning? As you peer inside, moving your moving bits of it, uh, the embers away, uh, paper, fully scorched. Like and receipts, like the same kind of papers. And as you're shifting it around, you can see that it bears an unmistakable resemblance to the ledger book that you had seen that mm. the elderly woman was writing in. Okay, guys, I got an idea. There's something, there's something weird, right? Yeah. I think I Maybe. should go in, back in, say, hello, I'm returning because I thought it over. I'm a customer. I would like to buy something. I can make it cheap. I don't want to buy that 750 gold thing or whatever. Are we in the alley right now? Where are we talking? We're, I, yeah, we would like leave the room. I assumed closer. you were still in the room. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, but you were in the alley, okay. I, yeah, I imagine I we in. stepped out. There's yeah. nothing in there, Ashvin, but the back wall does kind of move. That woman was, remember the, uh, the ledger she was, yes. she was writing in? Found evidence of that being burnt. Yes, yeah, some of it was being burnt. Like all of it was thing. burnt. It was all burnt. Okay, we gotta go back in there, and I'm gonna go be a customer or something, and check it out, test it out one more time. Follow behind you. Okay. I'll still be invisible. Oh, good. I'll, should I go by myself? By no, myself I'll, with you? Yes. Okay, you two stay right outside front. Let me try and help you. I, I, I have something that could help, and she, if she's already done this, then she, already knows something is up, so. Okay. What do you want to do? Just let me come with you. Yeah, 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 I know, but what's the plan? Just trust me. Oh, and then she it's walks. a secret? All right. As you walk around the corner. Why are we keeping secrets? We gotta <laughs> communicate. As Greta's this shouting down the alleyway, as you're turning the corner, you can just see the woman locking the front door to the gemery as she turns and sees you rounding the corner with Greta's voice resounding around the alley. <laughs> as she freezes in place. Um, hello? Yes? We're closed. I'm sorry. I need to go home. Oh. And Ashvin casts Charm Person. As this light disperses out of your hand very casually and flashes across her eyes, you watch as there's no reaction. As she blanches slightly from it. She rolled a natural 20. No! Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and she stops the moment and goes, no, 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 okay, okay, listen, no, um, what do you want to know? I don't want to get involved. No, please. And she backs up against the door that she's currently uh, just locked. No, please, I don't, um, would you, how can I help you? No, I don't want to get involved. Well, first of all, we're not going to hurt you. As you're running the court, are you still dragging the mace? Yeah. <laughs> still first of all, <laughs> first of all, we're not going to hurt you. As you're holding the mace in your hand. This is just because I've got bored. I as she's looking at it and looking at you and looking at Greta and looking at you and looking at Yeah, Oshman. I'll put my mace away. Yeah, put how it just, away. How tall is this woman? 5'5". Five, five. Okay. 
Um, Ashvin just kind of like like stoops a little bit and puts puts their arms gently, not like aggressively, but gently on her shoulders and just says, we don't want to hurt you. We're trying to help someone. We need to know what you know. Looking at her, there's a look of, of actual terror mm-hmm. across her face. Yeah. Which, given just the interactions you've had with her, doesn't match to your behavior. But make a persuasion check. Plus six, so 12. 12, she rolled yes. a three. Okay. As you look and yeah. see her relax slightly, she goes, okay, I can, um, Listen, I need to go. I need to go. If if you're here looking for Lefty, I need to go, oh. and I need to get away from here. But I will tell you what you what I know. Why do you need to leave? It's it's not safe for me. Okay, well why don't we all go somewhere? No, and talk? no, I you, need to go. You no. don't. And she see that she's holding like this bag in her hands, which is quite heavy. She's currently clutching it. You don't need to worry about Lefty. I, I don't worry about Lefty. Who are you worried oh, no. about? Uh, lefty, lef- Lefty's a, uh, what, some, Who? a fighter, something? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, I'm not worried about Lefty. Who are you worried about? The, the people who pay me to run this. Oh. I don't even know who they are. Is so it Stammeth? No, no, Stammeth is, is a drunk, like your friend. Oh. Well, I saw no, I, 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 It could be similar, yeah. What? But I, no, I just, I need, uh, I, I'm, I'm paid to be here to, to run the shop. Okay. And then sometimes people bring things they drop off and I put in boxes and leave in the back room. The, the wall inside moves. Yeah, we knew that. Did you just burn your whole ledger? Yes. Yeah, we saw the smoke. Oh, right. What's your name, by the way? Why? I'm Greta. Okay, I'd rather not say... Okay, so you're not Elta? No. Oh, it's Elta's Gemery, I thought. No, it's, it's Elta Gemery. We don't, we truly don't want to hurt you. We mean no harm. Make a persuasion check. 13. 13? I have no charisma. Stemeth came in to, uh, to receive payment, so. For what? I don't know. I just, I, I receive rocks. I pay people. Oh. I get money. I, I give rocks. So he gave a rock. No, mm-hmm. I just gave payment. No rocks from Stammeth. Okay. So, just gave Stammeth money, and Lefty was there, and then I, uh, what, and then I wrote it down, and I burned it. Um, yes, so, and that was it. I, I, the only, the only thing I know is, I worked something with the, the blue stave, the, over near the pits. The blue staith. You would recognize the word Ewan. It's a staith is another word for a, a pier or a dock. Typically, they're they're kind of large for a city or a town. So it's it's like the main place where there's a harbor. It's sometimes called a staith. The the blue staith. Uh, mm-hmm. And I, you know, I know what he's, I know what the blue staith would be. Yeah, so so uh, I, th- that's where most things came from was the blue staith, and it was the, the lots of poshalite. Yes, so poshalite oh. was the main main rock. Uh, I wouldn't guess it would be coming from. So the poshalite came from somewhere else. Yeah. It was big uh, uh, spheres. Big spheres. spheres. Yeah. Do you have any idea who who's been paying you? No, it just the money gets dropped off, and then I I pay the money out. And dropped off by who? I dropped don't know. Off. They just leave it inside. Oh, before you get to work? Yes. It's just there? Yes. What time is the next delivery you're supposed to arrive? Uh, tonight? The hour? Looks like we're camping Sometime, out. I don't, I, I'm never around. Has anyone else come in today? No. No. No one else. But I, but I need to leave before I... Yes, do you, you have, need to be safe. Do you yes. have a place to go? I, I'm just going to, I'm going to leave the city. Oh, you're done? Oh, yes. Oh, um, well, I'm really sad to see you go, but can we have the key? Yes, I don't care. Just Oh, thank yes, you. Now you we can key. hide out in there sure. and kill the bad guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's as simple Please. as that. I just that. want to let you know something. I'm not Lefty's friend. Make, make a persuasion. Yeah, because <laughs> guess what? 
He <laughs> lied to you. I know. Oh, Twenty well. natural. Twenty. <laughs> that is good to know. Three. So, get out of here. Be safe. Okay. 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 Yeah, um. Wait. Wait. I. I once made this. Um. And Greta pulls out a piece of silver. It's like a pressed piece of silver mm-hmm. with um an imprint of a flower on it. Mm-hmm. Um. And she gives it to her. I feel like you need this. There aren't any real flowers around here, but you could just have this on your journey. It's not worth anything, but it's pretty. She takes it. Thank you. You're welcome. What's uh, your name? No. Oh. Ashvin pulls out one of one piece of soap from the handful of soaps that they stole from the <laughs> spa. <laughs> She's now holding the pressed silver flower in the soap. Thank you. Good luck. I'm, I'm truly, truly sorry. We hope you find a better town. Get out of Restavon. See her look at you, and then she puts both the items in her bag, and then pulls out a fairly large pearl. <gasps> Greta literally gasps. And then just <gasps> oh! hands it to you. Sort of, she hands it towards both of you. Did yeah. Okay, okay, and snaps the bag shut and then just okay. runs down the street. May I suggest Muswell Hill? <laughs> she, tur- she rounds the corner. <laughs> I was just a fly on the wall for that entire conversation. Oh, I forgot you was here! <laughs> As all of you oh, jump oh, back she's from. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Oh. How, um, how heavy is this pearl? Uh, if I'm if I'm um, assessing it as one would, it's larger than you could fit on a ring. Oh, goody, a pearl! She's gone, right? Oh, she, she said, sad. "When are they coming back here?" I'm gonna Tonight? take a look she around inside, see if they left anything. Yeah, here, here's a key. Thank you. I drop it in thin air. As you <laughs> as you just <laughs> lands in the muck. Uh, I thought you were there. <laughs> as you're foraging around trying yeah. to find it, stepping inside. All of the cabinets on the left wall and the right wall are open and empty. Sass. She, oh. she took it all. Could Hecate take a look around and see if, uh, excuse me, she left anything? Peering inside uh, the space, it's cleaned out. But we got one pearl. That was nice. Yeah. All things considered. Is there anything else that could be, like, in behind the, the desk or? The desk? Empty drawers. This poor pearl. There is the single, pen. there's a, the quill pen is still sitting on the desk. Mm. Um, and a small inkwell, but it's unornamented. It's just mm. a little bit of ink and the quill pen, but otherwise nothing. The mm. stick furniture, the you desk material. You bring that pen to the the mean guy at the and hotel. the oil lanterns. They're still there. Mm. They're they've been extinguished. Yeah. The pen. He likes those. Yeah. But just for clarity, the the places with the drop off spot oh, is okay. the turn wall section. It's not okay. the front of the store. So then, did we close the door when we left? Yeah. yeah. On the back door. Yes. Okay. Let's test out the turn wall. Pushing on it, it just moves on a pivot, rocks back into place. Okay. It's the whole length of the wall. Okay, so what if we set traps on the back door? We're all in here in this in this side. We hear them come in, the traps go off. We do the little pivot, slide through, capture, boom, boom. How long can you be invisible wherever you are? An hour. Aw, oh, man, we got to wait longer than that. Yeah. But that's okay. Do you guys want to catch him? Ambush? Well, we don't even know who we're trying to catch. I'm down for the catch, but we got quite a long day ahead of us still. We also have... They said they come at night. They probably do it under shadow. Yeah, but I mean, what time it gets dark here? Oh, we never know when the sun sets. How long do we think we have? It happens late at night. Like, probably... Probably after midnight. What time yeah. do we feel like it is now? From yeah, what time is it? Uh, at this point in time, it's really only like three o'clock. Still. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking that we come back. We okay. have the key. We can come back okay. later tonight and okay. do your trap by the mm-hmm. But right now, I think maybe we should check out that, what is it called again? The Blue Stave. I wrote it down. I just can't remember. Yeah, so if we stave. go down to the Blue Stave, we can eye out who's working down there. Right. Yeah. And then maybe if we see them again. See if there's any sign of that postulus. Yeah, postulite. That's right, postulite. Yeah, you sobered up a little bit. And then maybe check in with our... 
Yeah, we got to check in with Mr. Gelatin. Yes. Did Lord Gelatin say anything about his alliances at all? Or no, no? I don't think I'm going to give you an recall. inspiration point for that. Really? Because you said Lord Gelatin. You get an inspiration point for that. <laughs> cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the specificity of it. Lord Gelatin at his request. We should We're, check out the Blue State, right? Yeah. Or yeah. Or the there. tannery where Stamith's crew used to hang out. Yeah, that's true. I feel like the Blue State, though. You won't be able to do both. By I, by the time you need to make your appointment with Kubris. I think the Blue State is more of where those people was that yeah. she was talking about. And then we could get eyes on them, suss out. But here's my main question. Do we tell our friends in Grin and Barrett about this? And do we tell Lord Kubra Skeleton about this? Or is this an undercover operation? We definitely have to tell Lord Gelatarn about we this. We do? Yes. This is our job. We're being paid to find something suspicious. Okay, yeah, 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 okay, hey. you're right. Uh, but we don't tell the Grin and Barrett folks. Not yet, at least. Okay. What else do we need to find out before tonight? We need more evidence of something suspicious going on. We need to establish a connection. Yeah between Emer's Heap and whatever is going on at the Blue Stave. Yeah. And we get back to, well, what's going on at the Elta Gemery. Right. Let's go to the Blue Stave. All right. Good. So as the four of you begin to make your way through the streets now, you have to ask for directions at a certain point as you realize that finding any kind of commonality to these thoroughfares is impossible. It's rat tracks that are leading in all different directions. Mm -hmm. But eventually you manage to follow up with a few muck haulers who are making their way who point you, uh, as you ask questions, most people don't actually know what you're referring to. As you keep referring to the blue state, blue state, you see a general confusion until finally you ask someone who's running a small market stand who directs you towards the northeast corner of the pits down an old track that runs along what was originally the shoreline. As you're stepping around the bend now, getting your first real look at the pits since you have arrived, it is a sight really unlike any you have ever had to process. You see these humongous pipes that are rising up out of the earth, cobbled together plates of copper and brass that are fashioned and held together by rope and twine and leather strapping, all hodgepodge pulled together, rising up at regular intervals with this white mixed with black smoke bellowing out. Mostly white mm -hmm. smoke at this hour of day. As well as an army of people, both descending into and coming out of two major bridge walkways that appear to bisect this enormous scar in the earth. At the far side of it, you can actually see the glinting specter of the water, just held at bay Whoa. by large dams that have been built up to block it from backflowing into the pits themselves, as well as these two larger earthen pillars that look like they formed whenever the water spilled into the sinkhole originally five years ago. From this perspective, you can see these two major ones that stick out have ramps and stairwells built around them that spiral deeper into the earth. And it appears that the main way of getting to them, the only way of getting to them, are two enormous wooden slat bridges cool. that completely bisect the pits and terminate in the middle. Uh, it's sort of like it's, as, a, as if it's holding aloft this bridge, a main stage platform where you can see people loading wagons, unloading wagons, and then getting back onto these slat bridges that are held aloft oh. with large anchors on either side. Oh, but yeah. as it is, it's, it's at least a half a mile across, maybe more. It's kind of hard to gauge the distance when you're looking at it because there's an intense sense of vertigo that strikes several of you as you look down and see only torches along the sides and blackness leading down into the earth below as well as the scar itself must be at least a couple of miles long as wow. it stretches across this, the seafront. But as you make your way to the northeast corner into a section of town that looks to be altogether abandoned, 
other than having a few warehouses that look like they're holding grains or some of the older, larger stocks, maybe wood that's been sorted to be used as building materials, it's well enough left alone. It's hard to get to. There's really only one road. And looking at it, the only thing that really remains of the blue stathe are a series of large wooden posts sunk into the earth with large anchoring bolts, which are unmistakable from that which would be used to lash a ship. A large, half-destroyed, half-swallowed wooden building that reads <laughs> Goran's Chandlery, and an infinite darkness falling off underneath, where it appears that the ocean was swallowed directly up to the wharf. All ships that had been attached there must have been swallowed as well. And then nothing. But as you stand there at the historic blue stathe, there's a single building and not much else. So Ashvin, having lived in Beerus, mm -hmm. been by the coast, maybe knowing a little bit about how a harbor might work, um, wants to look, look for or ask around for like a, a harbor master's place or something. Generally speaking, however, you find yourself alone. There's no one here. Okay. Yeah, as you're, you can see everyone else is concentrated around those two large uh, slatted bridges that lead into where you are, mm -hmm. lead into the middle rather of the pits. And from there, like an army of ants, people descend onto platforms and stages. But as it is, the only structure here that bears any resemblance to the historic wharf is the single chandlery. And for clarification, a chandlery is a place that sells, it's like a general store for ships. Okay. So that's the only thing that's here, but it's half swallowed. All that's left is really- So it's totally abandoned. It's yeah. fully abandoned. You can actually, okay. as you, if you were to lean far enough over the edge, you'd be able to see the bisected remains of it. It's still held somehow in place. Huh. You can walk up to the front door and if you were intrepid enough, actually step into it. Yeah. Um, but as it is, it's it would not be a possible res residence. Is there any place that is higher than the rest of it? Are there like are there any mounds or anything that you can like watch and oversee the activity? From the position you're in, you're butted up against where there are several warehouses that look to be kind of the forgotten warehouses in a way of, of, it's probably just because it's inconvenient to get here for most of the people pulling out raw materials. Yeah. But where you are now is really at the very front of where these enormous buildings that are stacked on top of each other begin. Okay. So there are residences that are built further up on the roof of the warehouse that in a lot of ways would look down in this area. They're about two and a half stories up, three stories okay. up on top of the warehouses where they're all catwalked together. But as it is, this none of them open onto this area. Okay. And there's really no foot traffic. So there's not even any peop other people around No, us you can see the people Everyone live is, in these residences. But, okay. They don't come this but way. Can, from where we are, can we make out people and figures doing their things? Like, is this a good people watching place? No. You can watch okay. the pits. And you get a you have a commanding vantage point of the entirety of the length of it. Okay. And in fact, from this perspective, make perception checks, all of you. Eighteen. Twenty-two. Twenty-one. Six. Six. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Now that you're over a bit of the awe and spectacle of this enormous hole in the earth, you can see that there's quite a few platforms that have built into the side faces of this sinkhole. Each of them are at least 100 feet down. A couple larger platforms where it looks like the, as the sinkhole formed, tiers formed in the earth. Some of them more stable than others where there are large gangplank platforms where you can see are possibly shelters, offices. Uh, there mm -hmm. possibly is actual business being conducted literally in the pits. People may actually live in the pits from where you are. And from this perspective, there's at least a dozen structures that are further from the area you're in. Where you're in right now, looking down, it just appears to go straight down. Mm. There was no place to really anchor into the walls. <sighs> Ewan, where do you think? Hmm. Do I have anything that's pit, like from my history of, of knowing, like where, is there any extra perception that I'm probably you picking said up? You said when she mentioned the place that you might know where it is. Yeah, that's what I, yeah. I'm stumped here. 
I'm stumped. I'm stumped as well. I'm sorry, gosh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've I done wanna, with this and I've yeah. been around this before, but this is just the remnants of one. Is there time for us to go back over to the... No. To where? The other side, the place where... The, where the tannery? The tannery? Yes. No. But we, don't have, we didn't have enough time to do both. But the gemery, they said that they're saying those gems are coming from here. Yeah, that means... But this that doesn't look occupied mm. at all. It's all abandoned. Yeah. Wait. Is it, was there any entrance to Gorin's chandlery? Make a perception check. 20, no, just kidding, 15. There's the obvious one of the front door. I'm going to go. I'm going to look in here. And as you step up onto the threshold, it creaks. The whole Maybe structure. I should only go in. I'm very light. You find that it creaks quite a bit. Oh, it's creaking quite a bit. Um, and um, going up to the doors, uh, the doors appear to have been lashed shut. The rope looks very old. Okay. Uh, is okay. The door is lashed shut. Yeah, it's been roped shut across hey, the handles. Hey, Ashvin, could you come? Uh, did you? Uh, the other side of your boomerang is sharp, right? Can it yes. reach to that to try to unlash the doors? Mm, do I see a place I can stand and reach it with my ten foot you reach? You can, yeah. Okay. Yeah, make an attack roll. <laughs> All right. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Yeah, yeah let's go ahead and roll that damage. You know, what, you don't have to roll damage as you as you. <laughs> Roll As you sweet cut cans. directly between the handles, it just slick cuts through the old rope, mm. which partially disintegrates and falls to pieces at the impact <laughs> of the strike. And as it just drifts to the ground, laying there like a, a, a slashed snake, um, the door is open. Ash, Ashvin exhales as if they've got just a tiny bit of mojo back. Yeah. <laughs> the pride has returned. Yeah. That was pretty foop and cool. Not bad. Um, Zachary. Zachary! <laughs> Floating off your shoulder. Can you float in there for me? As Zachary moves forward and just gently pushes the doors open, as the whole structure kind of wiggles a bit. Oh, okay. <laughs> as the door opens and goes wide, um, it looks to be falling to pieces on the okay. inside. The damage is unbelievable <laughs> to the floorboards themselves, where it appears that when the sinkhole appeared, it cracked the foundation and completely ripped half the building off into the depths below. Zachary, come back. Zzz. I was hoping that this might be the secret stash, you know, but it looks like this hadn't been used in a long yeah. time. Could I get to take a look around, see if there's any yeah. foot traffic that has been that has kind of like been around here or uh, something I need like everyone to make an insight check based on that actually. Is you're all glancing around. Oh, insight. Um, oh no. Oh, well, it's a natural 20. So it's a 19. <laughs> Wow. Ten. 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 Nine. Nine. I rolled a two. Oh, that actually fit quite How? well, actually. That actually How? fit quite well. Yeah. I have a minus one to it. As you're looking around for any other indications of foot traffic, something strikes you, which is that there's gravel here. And it's the first time you've encountered gravel in Restavarn, except for one other location, which was the staging area in Emer's Heath where the wagons pull up. And as you're standing there, you realize there can't possibly be any footprints because it's all gravel. There's an intentional laying of stone here. Are there rocks behind us? Like what, are we up against a cliff? I'm just a little confused by You're up against a series of warehouses that oh. looking inside are piled high with building material. Right. But it appears that even this entrance is not used. You have to kind of peek around gaps in the wall. The doors are on the other side for whoever uses them. None, okay. Because this, where you are is a dead end. It doesn't connect as a street anywhere else. Yeah. You're in one of the most inconvenient possible places you could be to connect to somewhere else in the city. Are any of the warehouses, do, does anything look out of place as we walk by them? Nothing strikes you as strange. So the gravel, where does it like lead? The gravel is uh, from roughly 400 yards out from Gorin's Chandlery a gravel has been laid along this area. This is probably to prevent foot traffic, right? No, to prevent, like, um, tracking. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay, got it. There's nothing here. Why are we here? No, the gravel. The only other place is Emer's Heap. This was put here with a purpose. What you're putting, that means, don't you think? If there's something there, I wouldn't you, have to, wouldn't you put gravel in because you're bringing something down heavier, like a wagon? Yeah, it's intentional. Yeah. So where does the gravel, like, 
end at the chandlery. And where does it start? Just about four hundred yards away. It's quite road. a long. It's quite a long route. Could could we see if there's anything near where the gravel ends? Uh, when you make your way over to where the gravel ends, it just ends at the side of a warehouse. At the side of a warehouse? Mm-hmm. Could I take a look around the warehouse and see if there's anything yeah, there? That yeah, that warehouse. I want to fill around the actual structure, or like yeah. look around it and yeah. fill it. Yeah, go ahead and make a perception check. That gravel warehouse. Oh, oh, come on. Same roll. 12. 21. 6. Natural 20. Oh, wow. Plus 3. I gave it back. So 23. 23. As you're moving yourself around the warehouse is looking for any anything, it's clear that this is not used. That's one thing that strikes you. The, mm. the hinges are rusted. It looks like this is, at one point, this likely was one of the main ways that goods were moved off the vessels, but because of the geography shift, they've used a secondary street since the, since the road ends here and kind of abuts at these warehouses. But as you're moving along, you find at a certain point, your feet begin to feel a hollow sensation underneath. As Ashvin, as you're moving about midway between the very edge of the chandlery, right where it drops directly off into the cliff, you find that your feet have a slight hollow sound to them. Sounds like wood underfoot. But there's gravel under your feet as well. There's nothing that would indicate that this is different. It's just a texture change, a sound change. It's very subtle. Are we outside? You are. So if you imagine at the end of, the, on the far side of the chandlery, right as it reaches the edge of the cliff, about halfway in the middle of what would be a road, you find that your feet have a slight hollow sound to them. It's, do you hear this? It's hollow over here. Yeah, I'm gonna scurry. Do you feel it? I'm gonna go down where, wherever uh, Austin's standing and lay down and like put my head up on the gravel and tap it. As you tap at it, you find that it gives way slightly. And looking now, as you're examining it, this is a some sort of uh, painted tarp or covering, like a carpet, which has been pulled over a section of the pathway that you're standing on. The gravel, as you brush it to the side, is a near match to the actual gravel you're standing on. And pulling it back slightly, you find that there is a you would, it's not a cellar. You recognize this, Ewan, again, Ewan's experience with, har- with harbors. What you're seeing here is actually a, an access ladder, normally where they would be in case someone needed to access the actual stilting of the wharf. And to so make they're normally exposed. They're normally exposed. And this is intentionally covered mm, up. This is covered. And okay. as you lift it up, peering down, it's pure darkness and a ladder. There's not even daylight coming through. This is very odd. Yeah. Because oh. normally this part of the wharf is wide out, out in the open. Oh, really? That's right. Ah. I'm thinking we can this find what? something cool down there. Oh, something. Something cool or something dangerous, but I'm with you. Ashvin yeah. gives the ladder a little bit of a shake to pretty see loose. how st- pretty loose. Mm-hmm. <laughs> does it feel like it could h- carry my weight? It does. Yeah. Okay. I would always warn you about that. Yeah. If it's anything that's like species specific for okay. that, I would warn you. Yeah. That would not be fun. I got Let's you. just go down the ladder. If there's any danger of us falling, I can I can cover us. Who goes first? I can go first. Do you want some of my light? Sure. Okay. Well, I mean. Okay, we're good. <laughs> His torch. Yeah, let's let's As the do that. The torch lights up. Let's head down. So let's go down. The party has to make a decision here. If you start to proceed downward, at any extent, you will miss your appointment with Kubris. I think that we go back to Kubris empty-handed. It's going to be, she's going to be disappointed. We're not empty-handed. But if we possibly we have show, the contraption. Right, but if we, sh- that's not, it, it's just a contraption at this point. And stammers. But maybe if we go down here and we get something else, he won't mind that we show up late. Yeah. My vote is to go down here and see what we find. Because now that we've uncovered it, who's to know? That whoever is trying to hide it doesn't come back, sees it uncovered, and then they get out of I here. say, I say we go explore this. Then I say we eat some more of those pickles I stole. Then I say we go to the midnight meeting, set the traps, do all that, and then meet Gelaton the next day, tomorrow, and tell him 
Whoops, we got the day wrong, but look at all this great stuff we did. I think Cooper, I think Lord Gelatarn will understand. Right? Maybe, maybe we can leave a message on the way. This might be a time-sensitive issue as well. No, but we'd leave a message with, with our friend back at... When? The pub. Uh, before oh, the yeah. midnight meeting Oh, that yeah, we leave about. a message with Husky. Let's say we go down here. Yeah. All right. This seems like the most likely place we would find something. I, I did really want to go over to the hideout, but I'm, I figure he's long gone by now. So, yeah. let's do it. <laughs> you and just, it's like, you know what? I feel that mighty sobered up. And I get on that ladder and I try to my best to grab it and put my legs and sl- slowly slide. As you get sliding down. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> as you get sliding down, you feel the friction of the wood splinters just biting into your gloves. <laughs> and you move about an inch. As you just find yourself now, as you removing your hands that are just laced with splinters. It was worth the effort. And I started walking, was climbing down. Climbing down. As <laughs> the group of you begin climbing down, you make it down about 30 feet, 40 feet, 50 feet, and you're just still climbing down on this ladder. Is Ooh. the torch the only thing we see? Yes. The only light? As you are descending in, in this hole, you find that there's no light from the outside world. 100 feet down, by best estimate. At this point, the hatch above you is looking like a tiny pinprick above. 150 feet down, 200 feet down. It's getting uh, to get, At this to get point, I'm getting uncomfortable and I want to pull out, just carefully pull out my lantern revealing. Okay. What is that? I call it a lantern revealing. Oh, wow. And hopefully, if there's anything invisible down here, it will show us. Oh. As you point the lantern down, mm-hmm. focusing the beam, it's just ladder for the full sight that you have. That is wild. Hey, let's keep going. <laughs> yeah. Are we going to make it to the bottom of the pits? Does this anybody point, have anything we can drop? At this point, 300 feet. Uh. Oh my God. 350 feet. We're going to make it all the way to Jeff. 400 feet. How do we feel at this like extremely cold? Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's it's getting to the point now where you're not getting any any heat from the sun and it's chilly. It's uncomfortable. But is cold. there a breeze coming from below? There's not. It's stale. It, at a certain point you start to you know have that brief hallucination that you've been in darkness doing the same repetitive task. Suddenly your feet find a landing. And you're on a small piece of earth. And looking around you're in a very cramped, tiny cave. Your feet are on stone. And you can see that the space around you looks to show signs of picks and uh, shovels and trowels that have dug at this space. And then about 10 feet across from you in this very cramped space are the handholds of a ladder and a hole going down. Another one? Oh, boy. How, how far was this first ladder? About 550 feet down. This is the worst day. This is... You're 55 oh stories underground. By this best is the cesspool of a I'm day. I'm dragging everything back up M- there. Maybe we should have just gone to dinner with... No. With the Lord. Well, yeah, We're already in this. Let's see it through. Okay. I prefer right. dinner too, but I get it. We gotta go through it. I don't have really nothing much left to eat. Okay, let's go. So as you continue climbing down, it's another 50 feet into darkness, another 100 feet into darkness. <laughs> the lantern's not showing anything? 150 feet into darkness, 200 feet into darkness. And then you find that the ladder stops. The hole continues. But there's no more ladder. There's no more ladder. And I'm at the bottom. You can see <laughs> from your lantern <laughs> that there is a glyph in the side of the wall that looks to be, it's, it's not a metal plate, it's a piece of clay that's been baked, ceramic, that's been inset into the wall that is where the ladder ends. 
and it faintly fluoresces as your lantern catches it. So it has some sort of magical effect to it. Would I recognize this glyph, what it does? Make an arcana check. Uh, three, the, I would. Actually, all four of you make an arcana check because I'm you so all have magical. Magical down here. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> I rolled Wait, what are we, which arcana? Arcana. Uh, the six. wizard got a nine. nine. <laughs> six. I rolled a one. The one? I got a four, though. You think it's a natural cave art, as far as you're aware. Four. Four. <laughs> hey, we both no one four. said anything, right? You just said it. You Oh, you said it looked magical. Well, my lantern came You would all see it's, it fluoresces. Yeah. You yeah. would see it flicker. I don't know what it is. I think Did it flicker like a like a posh light color, like a yellowy? No, it almost has a slight, uh, it almost has a slight bluish translucence to okay. it. Okay. It, it, it catches in the light to actually show that. Okay. The way that this lantern works is it reveals magical and invisible things. So I think before Ashvin thinks too hard, they might at least take a breath in. As you take a deep breath in, you catch the unmistakable must of books. There's just this earthy, leathery parchment smell that fills your nostrils. What do you smell? <sighs> You know, I heard someone say once that books can transport you. Mm. I think this is something like that. So you're saying, you're telling me this is conjuration? I just heard someone say once that books can transport you. Yeah, sure, yeah. That doesn't... Maybe. I know your sentiment. Now what are you talking about? Conjuration. Explain. It's the school of teleportation, bring things from other places, and oh. bringing things in, into existence and moving them over yeah, that's, space. That. So right. this, I never was much of a reader, but this could be a transportation glyph or something? How do we activate it? Why do you think it's about books? Not that you smell with it. It's just how, what I associate, you know. We've we've talked about this before. I just Well we gotta figure this out because we're hundreds of miles underground. Hundreds of feet. Feet. <laughs> Any ideas? <laughs> <laughs> we're at the center of the earth. What if I just anyone just reaches out yeah, and tries it. to touch it? No effect. Nothing? No. I recall the glyphs back on the island. Um, it doesn't I was match those. Able to discern. It doesn't match those. You know what? Yeah. I think I'm just gonna drop off the letter. What? Excuse me. No. I can. I'll be fine. Hecate. What do you mean you'll be fine? That's does, a hole. Does someone have a rock? Yeah. I don't. No, we have ropes and stuff. I have a lot of things in here. We could throw to the ground. You want me to do that? I got a good feeling about this. What? What? Good feeling. I love yeah. jumping into things, and even I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> what, what, can we give you a rope? I'll be fine. I can oh, fly. Oh, no. You can fly? Yeah. The rope is a good idea, though. Wait a minute. You, you can you really can fly. fly? Yeah, I have a spell for it. Okay, we'll cast that. I'll do that, then. Huh. All right. Don't just tell us so, you're going to drop in a hole. <laughs> well, I figured if I just drop, and then it would activate, you know. Okay. But now, give us a heads up. That's what I thought, but then he put his arm and nothing. I feel like taking a drop now. I'm so nervous. Me too. Yeah. All right, well, then Hecate will invoke the Raven card and cast Fly. Okay. Gains a flying speed, but I can still choose to just drop. Yeah. So Hecate will kind of drop and see if anything happens off the ladder. And as you drop, you just fall 30 feet. Do you want to keep falling? Uh... <laughs> also, is your torch out? Yes. Okay. He'll drop more. 30 more feet? I don't think this is working. I'll fly back up. All right. Nothing what are you doing is? How far you go down? That's 60 feet. Oh, boy. Well, if okay. you're flying now, just, yeah, just keep going down. Oh, yeah, See no, no, what's I, down there. I'll, you were worried about me being... Well, yeah, you can fly. Right. I see your little light. It's <laughs> fair, fair enough. 
He'll, I guess he'll he'll try dropping some more, actually. Right. So as you drop, <laughs> you find yourself 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, 210, and then your torch goes out. 240, 270, 300. And suddenly, there's the briefest movement out of the corner of your eye. I need you to make two dexterity saves. What happened to his torch? I don't see it anymore. The light went out. Ooh, first one is going to be a 18. Mm -hmm. Second one is going to be uh, an 11. An 11. The first sight out of the corner of your eye appears to be something flashing metallic that passes just behind you. Something sharp. Oh, which no. jars you as you're falling, and as you go to right yourself from this free fall, you feel a blinding sensation at the back of your head as something has struck you incredibly hard. It goes black, and you fall unconscious. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh no. And that's where we'll pick up next week. <laughs> oh, God! Ah! The centaur wizard, huh? We just <laughs> killed Hackney. <laughs> oh, no. Uh oh. Thank you, everybody. No. Oh, God. Uh, I want to once again thank our wonderful Patreon supporters for helping make this show possible. If you're interested in keeping this story going, go to patreon.com slash Brooklyn Quarter so that we can find out what happened to Hecate Volschnik. And with that, have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week, and we will see you next time on Novel Chronicles. 